Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Tonight, I have your AEW Revolution 2021 full show review and results for you guys. As you guys know, we're going to run through the entire AEW Revolution show, breaking down all the action, what I thought personally about the feuds coming in, the matches, everything that happened on the show. I'm going to let you know exactly what took place, how I took it in, you know, what I thought of it, what I thought of the matches, all the outcomes, where I think we'll go from here, all of these different things. I will tell you about all the details and any sick-ass attires or anything like that. You will find out about it right here, right now. Very excited for this show coming in, man. I mean, it felt epic, right? We had a loaded card. I could not wait to get into it, guys. So without further ado, let's dive into AEW Revolution 2021 and let's break down all of the ish and find out if this show was shitty, great, or somewhere in between. So opening up the show, guys, not talking about the women's tag team match from the kickoff. We are talking about the AEW Tag Team Championship match that kicked off the main show. The Young Bucks defending their championships against Chris Jericho and MJF. Very excited for this matchup coming in, and it delivered. I thought it was a very fun matchup. MJF had on a sick-ass, like, blue and white gear. I would like to have that in figure form. It looked pretty damn nice. Bucks in their Volt and Pink Zebra gear, which looked also very nice. Very nice, just quality tag team match. You know, not a typical Bucks match where it's just flying all over the damn place, but very fun, very creative, and it just flowed very well. It's a very fun matchup. I definitely recommend going back and watching it. AEW tag team matches always deliver, and this one was no shortage. At the end of the matchup, we did get a Meltzer driver on Chris Jericho. One, two, three. No shenanigans. Chris Jericho and MJF as the inner circle do fail to capture the tag titles, and the Young Bucks remain your AEW World Tag Champions. I am completely okay with this. I thought they would probably drop the tag titles here, but it did not happened. I was okay with it. Young Bucks did a fantastic job in this match. I'm enjoying their reign so far. I figured that it would get a little bit more personal since, you know, Papa Buck got his ass beat by the Inner Circle, but uh, maybe we'll get that after this. But the Young Bucks win in a quality opening matchup for Revolution. Next up, guys, we had the Casino Team Battle Royal or the Tag Team Battle Royal between the 20 teams or the 20 team, whatever, whatever how many teams there were. Regardless of the fact, ladies and gentlemen, what an epic Battle Royal. Probably one of the better Battle Royals that I can remember in recent memory. Tons of great moments in this thing. Luchasaurus put on a clinic. Everybody in the match just did really, really well. I, I, I want to skip, skip over a majority because I'd be sitting here all day if I recapped every single thing that happened. I actually recommend going back and watching this Battle Royal if you guys can or find the highlights or whatever the case but it came down to Jungle Boy, John Silver, and the Death Triangle. Pac and Ray Phoenix down as the final four. After some quick back and forth between all the teams, guys, it came down to the final three which was Jungle Boy taking on Pac and Ray Phoenix Phoenix together, so it was a two-on-one scenario. Jungle Boy ended up getting Pac eliminated, so it was 1v1. Jungle Boy taking on Ray Phoenix, and these guys put on a clinic, man. I can't even describe what we witnessed. I gotta have an actual match between these two, and I gotta give them at least 15-20 minutes, because it was over the... It was just crazy, man. It was very intense, very insane. The ending of this Battle Royal was super creative, super fun, and you gotta go back and watch it, but at the end of the day, guys, Ray Phoenix would eliminate Jungle Boy after just some magician-like issues. Man, you gotta go back and watch it. But Ray Phoenix and Death Triangle with Pac, they win the Battle Royal, so they will get a future opportunity with the Young Bucks. And if you guys know, the Lucha Bros and the Young Bucks tore the house down. I can just imagine that Ray Phoenix and Pac and Death Triangle will do the same thing with the Young Bucks in their championship match. But what a fun Battle Royal. It was way funner than, it, you know, it was way more fun than it had any right to be. Just super, super fun. Over the top and crazy. You gotta go check it out. Very fun stuff to watch. And yeah, I highly recommend it. I think that Jurassic Express had a good showing in this thing. Hate, uh, you know, Luchasaurus got eliminated. I think it was by Bear Country. I think they got eliminated by, but Death Triangle gets the win. I figured that would be the case, and I'm all for it. I don't have any problems with it. Great little battle royal right here. Up next, guys, we had my girl Rio Mizunami coming in, going after the AEW Women's Championship. Sheeta defending her title against Rio here, and I was super excited for it because, if you guys did not know, I'm a huge supporter of Rio. I think she's absolutely fantastic. Ever since I saw her debut at Double or Nothing a couple years ago, I think that was, a, I don't know, time flies by nowadays. But ever since her debut, I was like, dude, that chick with the pink hair, she could, she could slap titties, and then she, uh, the pandemic caused her not to be able to really come to any AEW show. So then when she was put in that women's championship tournament, I was going for a hardcore and for her to win the thing, I was completely shocked by that. I was really appreciative for her to get that spot. She came in this match. Oh man, these ladies beat the hell out of each other. I feel like, you know, Twitter was saying that it was a boring match and all this and that, but that's clearly not the case. I think they just aren't, they aren't bought into the characters, you know. They're not really bought into Rio and they're not bought into Sheeta, but I will say, I don't want to spend too much time on it because I don't have the figures here, but it was still 
still a damn good football game. Very physical, very hard hitting. Maybe it went a tad long, man, but they really made Rio look really strong here, and Sheeta looks great winning that matchup that she's a strong champion, that it's going to be a lot to put her away, and we're still waiting, I guess, on that women's talent to do so. I thought Rio was the one. Not going to be the one here today, Brad, but after the matchup, Britt Baker, Nyla Rose, and company beat the hell out of both ladies, so I guess we'll see where we go from here, but damn, this was a good match, man. I don't care what you say. Maybe a little, uh, you know, I just don't think that people are connected to these women because they're not featured enough on AEW television. I still think Rio's the best women's talent in the company, and I'll stand by that one, but this was a good match. Just a little slow here and there, but Rio does not get the job done, and Sheeta is still your champion. Next up, guys, was our tag team match. Rusev and Kip Sabian taking on the best friends in Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. A matchup that I was very much looking forward to simply because I wanted to see, you know, the old Rusev and Miro. Obviously, he's Miro now, but, you know, the old Rusev going one-on-one -on -one with Orange Cassidy in a match just makes me super happy, man. Can you imagine the happy Rusev Day gimmick going up with the Orange Cassidy gimmick? I mean, that's just beautiful. I know it's not its entire iteration right here, but nonetheless, before the matchup, Rusev and Kip Sabian would attack Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor. Beating them before the match, Chuck Taylor was busted open in this thing, but this fun, this matchup was actually really fun. And, you know, I think it, it, it was booked exactly how it should have been. We had some fun activities in there. It didn't, it wasn't supposed to be a five-star classic. It wasn't supposed to be something like that. I think this was a greater story to further Miro's character, get him a little bit stronger while getting the fun interaction with the best friend. I hope that this calls for the feud because they've been feuding for so long. I really don't want to see another match unless it's one-on-one -on -one with Orange Cassidy. I really don't want to see Miro go one-on-one -on -one with any of the other members of the best friends, but this matchup was really fun. Seeing Orange Cassidy and Miro in the ring, the back and forth, the just it was really fun, man. I, I had a lot of fun with this. It wasn't meant to be a classic, and I think it did the job. At the end of it, Chuck Taylor would get the camel clutch put on his ass. He got Machka kicked. He got down for the count, Brad, and he taps out at the end of the day, and I think that was perfect. I think, you know, you made Miro look strong. It made him look great. He finished it at off. You know, it wasn't Orange Cassidy that tapped, so I'm all for it, man. It was really good stuff here. Miro does get the win, and I predicted that. I felt like he needed that win here because, I mean, if he lost, what I mean, he was better off in WWE, right? I mean, I think this was a good win for him, and I think it was much needed. Good stuff. I enjoyed it. Not much else to be said there, Brad. Next up, guys, was our big money match between Big Money Matt taking on Adam Hangman Page, or Hangman Adam Page. Whatever the hell you want to call the man. This matchup was very underrated, man. Like, I was, I was super uh, ready for the matchup, like I was excited for it, but then this matchup just, I don't know what it was, it just had a great flow to it. These guys have really good chemistry, like you wouldn't expect it, but Matt Hardy and Adam Page put on a damn banger right here. I mean, it wasn't like a five-star classic or anything, but this matchup was super fun, man. I, I highly suggest going back and watching it, especially like the last five minutes, these guys turned it up. You had interferences from Private Party, The Dark Order, really good story developing right here. I thought Matt Hardy was going to get the win, but at the end of the matchup, guys, The Dark Dark Order comes out, and it was just so poetically beautiful the way they helped Adam Page win here, like helping him, getting his back. At, at the end of the matchup, guys, they helped it. Like, they, Matt Hardy knocks Adam Page off of the apron. The Dark Order, like, slingshot him back up into the buckshot lariat. Just gorgeous looking stuff. One, two, three. Adam Page wins. Celebration with Dark Order afterwards. They get the beers out. Big man hug there. Really good stuff, man. Really, really fun matchup right there. I enjoyed it. Uh, I thought that the storyline could have called for a better story, you know, if Matt Hardy won. But I still like the story that we got anyways, and I can't wait to see where it goes from here and how everything progresses, but Adam Page defeats Big Money Matt in the Big Money Match. Next up, guys, we had the Face of the Revolution ladder match between Cody, Penta, Lance Archer, Scorpio Sky, Max Caster, and Ethan Page debuting as the mystery opponent in this ladder match. Now, I gotta be honest with you guys, coming into this was really, really looking forward to this matchup, and I feel like it was kind of a letdown. Like, it had its moments for sure, but I felt like it was quite sloppy. There was a lot of, like, laying around. It didn't really flow well like a typical ladder match. You know how usually ladder matches, it's like spot after spot and a lot of flowiness and a lot of like things leading to the next thing. I didn't feel like this matchup had a lot of that. There was a lot of standing around, a lot of laying around. At one point, Cody like got hurt, quote unquote, kayfabe hurt, and he goes up on the stage and he stands in the tunnel for like 20 minutes and then near the end of the matchup, he count he comes back out. I don't know. It just it just kind of fell flat for me. It didn't really, it, again, it had its moments but it was quite sloppy. At one point, Cody went for this, he went for the Cody cutter and it looked like a damn cookie cutter, Brad. It was not very good. He 
he completely whiffed. Penta whiffed. It was just, it was definitely a botch. It'll be on Botch of Mania. And I don't know. It just, I don't know. This match was good. It had its moments, like I said, but for the most part, it just kind of fell flat for me. At the end of the matchup, though, Scorpio Sky does end up grabbing the brass ring and winning the matchup. I'm fine with that. Scorpio Sky is really fantastic, guys. If you haven't seen him in the ring, I don't know where the hell you've been living, Brad, because he's really damn good in the ring, super athletic, and put on great matches with anyone. And him versus Darby in the future will be fantastic if it is Darby or whoever the TNT champion is. I think it will be great. But this matchup kind of fell flat for me. It definitely didn't live up to the hype or it wasn't as fun as I had hoped it would be. Not terrible or anything like that. Just kind of sloppy and, and didn't look like it was completely uh, like, I don't know. It just didn't flow very well, if you will. But I'm fine with the winner. I'm fine with that. Just wasn't, uh, wasn't big on some of the things that took place in this matchup. But there you go. Scorpio Sky grabs the brass ring, Brad, and that's what you need to know. So after the ladder match, guys, we cut backstage and, uh, or we didn't cut backstage. We just stay there and everything kind of relaxes and stuff and we get brought to the ring and the new talent, the big Hall of Fame worthy outwork anyone, big time AEW signing is going to be none other than Christian Cage. Christian is all elite. I made a tweet saying atheist is all elite because, you know, Christian, he can't go by Christian so he goes by the opposite. Atheist, yeah, all elite. A yeah, you get the point. Regardless Regardless, guys, again, I feel like they kind of set themselves up for failure. It is what it is. It's cool. It's whatever. I think he'll be able to put on a few good matches here and there. Maybe he'll prove me wrong completely. I've always loved Christian. I just don't know. You know, I felt like with all the things they've been saying about the hype, the Hall of Fame, and the, you know, the work rate, and all of these things, I think Christian is absolutely Hall of Fame worthy. No doubts about it. But as far as coming in and making a huge, huge splash, I don't know if that's going to be him. But, you know, a Punk, a Cena, a Lesnar, I knew that wasn't going to be the case, so I felt like they ultimately set themselves up for failure here and uh, with all the hype coming into this major wrestling asset all of these different things I feel like Christian would have worked perfectly in the WWE storyline it was just in the rumble it was going to be a perfect build to Wrestlemania between him Roman and Edge and him coming over kind of interrupts that we're definitely not going to get Christian in that build to Wrestlemania like we thought we were after the Royal Rumble so I don't know I mean it's cool it's whatever I just don't think it moves the needle a whole lot coming into AEW with this but I'm going to hold my tongue see where it goes from here but that is the big signing man christian is all elite and we'll see what comes of it but we'll just have to see how it all plays out next up guys was our cinematic street fight between sting and darby allen taking on brian cage and ricky starts here and this matchup you know what man there's a tale of two takes right here you know i think that if you were to ask anybody, uh, did you enjoy this match? I think a lot of people are going to say, yeah, but the commentary was terrible. The match was okay, but the commentary was terrible. Okay, when you do a cinematic matchup, man, you don't do commentary with it because your, your sound effects and your music, like, the point of cinematography is, like, it's shot in a way to tell the story. You don't need the commentary's reaction to the story. You, like, the sounds and the camera panning and the craziness and the transitions and the story is told through the camera work and the sounds and the and the music and the sound effects man you don't need Taz who's literally on one of these teams rooting for one of these teams going damn good job Brian yeah good job socks yeah yeah good job oh yeah uh-huh oh yeah oh yeah oh oh whoa like nobody wants that shit nobody wants that shit nobody wants to hear that this match would have been so much better without commentary bro i can't even tell you there were so many cool moments in this matchup but they were completely ruined by commentary like darby allen and sting both look great in this matchup i thought the whole like the match was good it was a good match i enjoyed the matchup but they need to upload this to youtube or something where it doesn't have the commentary because the commentary borderline ruined everything. Mainly Taz. This match did not need commentary. And that's about all I can say. I think it was a fun matchup. Sting and Darby Allen get the win much like they needed to. I thought that was the co definitely the right choice here. But damn, this match didn't need commentary. Especially Taz. It was mainly Taz's fault. And he shouldn't have been on commentary because like having his reaction. He should have been on site at the matchup getting involved in the matchup somehow. That would have been a way better story. It would have worked way better. They didn't do that. Really cool imagery in this match. Really fun match but the commentary was just god awful but sting and darby allen won so you know on to the next one 
And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the exploding barbed wire match. The AEW Championship on the line, Kenny Omega versus John Moxley, a match I was very much looking forward to. And I think anybody would tell you, man, that this matchup was a lot of fun. Like, there was a lot of great moments, a lot of oh my god moments, you know, barbed wire, blood, all the nine. Kenny Omega had his jeans on. I mean, this was a great matchup up until the ending, all right? So in this exploding barbed wire match, right, there's a 30-minute time limit, and at the end of the 30 minutes, there's supposed to be like this thing where a timer ticks down and at the end of the 30 minutes the ring's supposed to explode and these little like explosion zones on the outside of the ring are supposed to explode so this is supposed to write Moxley off TV like this is what I'm thinking the whole time when the good brothers come out there they help beat on Moxley uh the end of the matchup however came on a one winged angel on a chair I mean they they protected Moxley really well in this matchup so I, I gotta get the uh, uh, just just hang on just a second all right at one point in the moment at one point in the match Kenny hits a one-winged angel on John Moxley, but instead of kicking out, he puts his foot on one of the exploding ropes, so he explodes or takes an explosion and hurts himself instead of kicking out, which I thought was a really nice little ploy there. You know, he doesn't kick out of the move, but he, you know, hurts himself to continue going on in the matchup. I thought that fit the Moxley character. Really good job right there, but at the end of the match, all right, back to, back to the countdown. At the end of the countdown, like I said, the Good Brothers came out and they beat the hell out of Moxley. They handcuffed him. They, you know, he's a bloody mess. He, he's laying in the middle the ring. Out, come, out comes Eddie Kingston because he's like, oh my god, my boy's about to explode in the middle of the ring, right? They go way back. He's trying to get with Moxley, trying to drag him out of the ring. Well, the t the timer's ticking down, man. Five, four, three, two, one. He covers Moxley. I'm thinking the ring's gonna cave in. There's gonna be like some big explosions. Maybe the camera cuts out to make it sell the explosion and make it seem like a huge deal and like, oh my god, what the hell happened? I shit you not, Brad. Pain Kane has had Kane's had better pyro than this. AEW entrances have better pyro than this. The turnbuckles kind of sparkle up and kind of plip and then like some outside ring stuff kind of goes and some smoke comes out. And that's it, man. Completely embarrassing. It was embarrassing. It was very embarrassing. Me and Brad are just sitting there. I had John over as well. We're all like, woof, bro. That was rough. Like, what the heck? That was embarrassing for me as a wrestling fan to sit there and watch it, let alone Eddie Kingston and Moxley having to sell the damn thing. This is supposed to write Moxley off television, and he's sitting there, and now I feel like what was a great show, what was a great event, what well, was a great main event is going to be overshadowed by this horrific botch and this is an all-time botch moment I think like no doubt about it this is uh, this is an all-time botch moment, man. It was uh, it was rough to say the least. It looked like sparklers, man. There was no boom. Like you could have you could have done a lot better than that, man. I don't know what you could have done, but you should have had the ring rigged up to where it like caved in at least and filled up with smoke or something. There could have been a lot better done there, but again, the matchup was fun. I had a lot of fun with the match. I thought the two men involved were great. The ref was in like a hazmat suit to protect him from all the blood and guts in the match. Oh man, I'm just embarrassed for the company as a whole. I mean, it was just really weak, man. Everybody's making jokes about him. I mean, is that supposed to be, is it supposed to be like, I don't know, bro. I guess Kenny Omega was supposed to be the constructor of the ring, right? I guess he, he sucks at building exploding rings. Is that supposed to be the story here? He couldn't construct something to destroy Moxley with, I guess is the story. Which I guess could make sense, but oh man. Woof. I still love the show. I still love the match. I, I thought all the things were great, but Jesus, man, that was an underwhelming explosion and finish. And Eddie Kingston laying there selling the damn weak-ass explosion, man. Oh, my God. What are we doing, man? He's just sitting there in the fetal position, like, just crunched over, and they're, like, rolling his lifeless body over like he just got blown the hell away like Yamcha. And here he is just... Just, it, it was sparklers, man. Nothing even touched him. Moxley makes sense. You know, he got his ass beat for 35 minutes, and he's bloody, and he went through hell and stuff. He actually exploded in this matchup. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm getting the hell out of here. Overall, I really enjoyed the show. It was a lot of fun, but Jesus Christ, you gotta go back and watch that. Woo! Kenny Omega to your AEW chat. Oh, yeah, another thing. Don Callis was on commentary for, the, for a lot of this matchup. Stop putting managers on commentary please it really weighs it down for me i don't i don't like it like callus don't get me wrong callus was a million miles better than taz no doubt about it but I don't want to hear the con I don't want to hear the managers on commentary the commentators commentate the managers manage 
if you want the thoughts of the manager through the match, do it pre-game, you know, before the match, on the kickoff panel, backstage interviews. Don't put them on commentary. I don't want to hear your ooh, ah, yes, all this shit. Nobody wants to hear that, man. Anyways, overall, really enjoyed the show. Don Callis was a lot better than Taz, though, I will say. I think uh, towards the end of the matchup and stuff, he got a lot better as it progressed. I just wanted to add that in, but I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Kenny Omega is still your champion. Moxley exploded, and uh, yeah, Kenny Kenny Omega, is he, he wins the match and the stuff, and I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. Thank you so much for watching this Revolution review. Before we get out of here, let's get into our random shout-out. This shout-out is going to go to Zebus, who says, A figure a day makes money in my bank account go away. And that is the truth, Bradley. That is the truth. But a huge shout-out to them, man. Thank you for watching the Revolution review, guys. Let me know what you thought of everything down in the comment section below. I'm getting the hell out of here. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't cross the line like that god dang pyro did in the main event. You cross the line.